Welcome, Dr. Rachel Bergeson and Dr. Marissa Biziani from Student Health Services here at Stony Brook University. What are the symptoms of the 2019 novel coronavirus? The symptoms that we're most worried about are a fever and the lower respiratory symptoms, which would be cough, uh, chest pain, um, shortness of breath. What do the Department of Health and the CDC suggest to prevent this, this virus? The best thing we can do is good hand washing. And uh, if you are coming down with fever or any respiratory symptoms, that you cover your mouth, you're not spreading uh, the disease and germs. And if you're coughing, to cough into your sleeve, not your hand, because frequently we touch surfaces. And we should also be wiping down uh, our desks and computers and phones um, with an antibacterial uh, to prevent the further spread. If you are sick, get a mask or wear a mask that would be helpful to keep spreading it from people who are not sick. We do see a lot of students walking around campus with masks on. Can you tell us about that? We do have a lot of students that are coming and asking for masks. And masks are used for students or anyone who are not well to prevent the transmission of germs. So students that are healthy are generally not advised to wear masks. If they want to wear a mask, that's their prerogative. But student health services are not providing masks to healthy students. We're providing masks to students who are exhibiting uh, symptoms of a fever. We've been getting questions from parents, from people in the community. We do have a, a very high population of international students, and a lot of those international students are Chinese students. What are the guidelines that we're providing to these students? The guidelines is not just to Chinese students or international students, it's to our full campus community. The guidelines are that if you have a fever, whether you're a student or whether you're faculty or staff, do not come to class. Um, go see a primary health care provider or come to student health services. So then you could be assessed. Um, that's our number one guidance. And we've been continually, you know, putting out that messaging. Um, we've gotten a lot of students and parents who are concerned if they are even with students that have traveled to the region of interest. And what we've said is that if the person you've been next to traveled, but they don't have a fever, or they don't have symptoms, then according to the Department of Health and CDC guidelines, there is no reason to be concerned. Um, and sometimes that's a challenging conversation because that's not always the answer people want to hear, but those are the current guidelines and we are following them. Uh, we've done a tremendous amount of outreach to the campus community in terms of flu kits. We've nearly tripled our amount of influenza vaccine, even though this virus does not, it's not preventable by vaccine. Um, it does prevent other influenza-like illness. Uh, so we are giving influenza vaccine out um, and we're doing the best we can with that messaging. Um, and again, answering questions to our parents, uh, talking to our faculty and talking to our staffs, just so that we, they have a good understanding of what this virus is and how it's transmitted. Um, there's a lot of misunderstandings about how you can get this. And I think that the, the epidemiologists are still learning about this virus, which makes it more challenging. So we are working very close with our hospital, uh, our university hospital. We have calls just about every day. Um, we are staying in very close contact along with the Department of Health, and we are following the guidance. Are we asking students that traveled from China or through China to check in with the school, with anyone on the university campus? So as you return into the United States, we're not asking anyone to quote unquote officially check in. Um, the government has made those arrangements through airports and they are being screened. But we do have a screening process at Student Health Services and all the local, uh, not through ourselves, but local primary care practices and, and hospitals do have screening practices in place to assess for travel, assess for symptoms that are indicative of the novel virus. So those are the measures that are in place. And again, with messaging in terms of you know, come and see a provider. Um, we don't want students to ignore symptoms and not be seen. Um, we really do need to assess the situation. And students that we are concerned about, there is a 24-hour hotline that the Department of Health has provided us to contact them, and they will uh, speak with us about cases of concern, and then they will give us further direction to determine whether or not this would be what they call a PUI case, a, a person under investigation. So, and if a student does feel these symptoms and does meet the criteria, having had traveled in, in China uh, or been in Wuhan, 
Um, what do you tell those students to do? What should be their first action? And their then first action actually should be to call the health service to let us know that they're coming in. So that way we're prepared and can give them a face mask when they get in and we can put them in a room specifically isolated from the rest of the other student body and protect the rest of the population that may be there with uh, other illnesses. And that way also we're able to, if we need to do further testing and chest x-rays, can get the ambulance uh, and get it to the health service, get them out the back door and get them over to the hospital for uh, further testing. It's okay, and so that's the indication is for, if there is indication to go to the hospital. Right, so if they have a travel history from China and they are coughing and they have a fever, uh, then they should uh, call us. Like I said, first, it's best, but if they don't, we'll give them a mask at once they present to the front desk. And what's indicated in terms of treatment? Right now, it's um, totally um, supportive care for the individual, and it's if they need a respirator down the road, obviously that would be at the hospital. Um, but uh, right now, we're still following the evolution of the disease and how serious it is in each individual case. And we're consulting with the Department of Health on all of this. Who is most susceptible to be to to this virus? To be to get this virus? Who who would who is classified as someone who can get it and someone who can be negatively impacted by it? I think that all of this, us are potentially at risk for getting the virus, but the ones that we're particularly worried about if they do get the virus are those who have um, autoimmune diseases, uh, cancers, um, you know, the asthmatics, the diabetics, uh, people who have other chronic health issues are the ones that are more likely to have a more serious case. The most important part is knowing that there is no specific test yet that can be done on a routine basis so that even within the hospital there's a respiratory panel test that can be done but it doesn't include this particular coronavirus it includes several other coronaviruses it includes the flu of uh, type a and type b and uh, peri-influenza and a few other tests um, but it doesn't specifically tell you that you have this one right now. Um, so you can't go in and say, I want to be tested for the coronavirus. It so has to be sent So basically it's a out. rule out. It's a rule out. And, and all these tests have to go to the CDC? Right now. For verification? And the Department of Health uh, locally is working on also verifying testing so that hopefully they'll be able to do it as well in the near future. And they have to approve who will or will not be tested for the novel virus. And so is there anything else you can, you'd can you like to tell parents who are concerned about their students being on campus? I mean, I'll tell you what I share with all my parents that I speak to is, I mean, I'm a mother myself, and I understand from that perspective and that view how concerning and worried you would be. Um, I think that, you know, we're, we're doing what we are being guided to do. Um, I feel that we've done and we've covered every angle and every corner in terms of even if we do get a case, that's the Department of Health says we do have provisions in place that if we needed to separate students, that has not had to happen yet. And I want to repeat that, that has not had to be the case as of today. Uh, but we have made proactive decisions. I feel that our action planning has been very, very robust. Um, and again, this is something that we are on top of. It's been our number one priority. Um, so I, I, that's, what I, that's what I've been communicating to parents, that this is right now Everything has been pushed aside and from student health services. This is our number one priority. The student health service number is 631-632-6740. Thank you for providing us this opportunity. You're welcome.